two minutes. Well, I've got two minutes. Let's see how I can go. Continuing on with the announcements that were made today with changes to the EPBC Act list of threatened species, so two in particular that I wanted to know some more details of. Um, and first I note that, sadly, the Bramble K melimus is now listed as extinct, um, which you know, the IUCN had or, uh, already listed them as such. Um, do you have any comments about the extinction of the Bramble K melimus? No, Senator, we don't have any comments. So why they've gone extinct? What actions did the department take to prevent their extinction? What lessons has the department learnt from the extinction of the Bramble K melimus? So, Senator, the recent um, assessment by the Threatened Species Scientific Committee was at the end of a, a pretty thorough collection of evidence of its absence uh, over some time, so several trips by the Queensland Government to the Bramble Cay to try and find the last of those species, including a pretty rushed trip, I think, in 2015, which was seeking to gather any of the remaining to bring into, essentially translocate them off the island. Um, which is a pretty high-risk endeavour. It turned out, as it was, that they could not find or identify any other species on the island. Um, Queensland um, assisted us in this assessment, um, and uh, it, it, the, the threatened species we did conclude that after five years plus of no evidence of the species on the island, that it did warrant listing as extinct. It's not a decision to take lightly, because, of course, once something is listed as extinct, it essentially ceases to get any protection under the Act. So, hence, there's always a delay if you like, while the evidence is absolutely gathered, to be certain. So what lessons has the department learnt from the extinction of the Bramble K melimus? Well, Senator, I think I would just go back to the, the fundamental architecture that we're trying to make sure that we deliver good outcomes for species is based upon uh, sound regulation, sound science, sound investment, and that's why we've, we've put a lot of effort into um, not only making sure that the Act uh, has uh, up-to-date evaluations of species to then inform the regulation, but also to inform where we, where we spend our money under things like regional land care, et cetera, where we're focused heavily. Uh, the predominance of the, the money that we're investing over the course of the next uh, few years is on threatened species because we knew we need to target to have, uh, to have positive outcomes. It's, it's a it's an enormous challenge for the country. I think we've said this before the, the funnel and species inquiry that um, we don't shy away from the fact that we have a large challenge ahead of us, but that, that's why we put all of this effort into trying to make sure that we target our regulation and our spending so that we hopefully avoid this type of situation going forward. Do you agree okay, with we'll John? Can I just ask one last question on, on You will come back to you at 20 past nine. Your question. So the question that I was about to ask before the break is to about the lessons that the department has learnt from the extinction of the Bramble Cay melimus. I mean, do you agree with um, Professor John Wynarski, who in February last year said it could have been saved? That's the most important part. Who was on the Threatened Species Scientific Committee that approved the 2008 National Recovery Plan for the species? So, uh, Senator, all I would say is I think uh, Mr. Richardson's uh, laid out a good portion of the more recent actions that we took to try and uh, understand what the status of the species was and what could be done. Um, and, and obviously, as I mentioned previously, losing a species is not something that anyone uh, would, would seek to have happen, and certainly we will try to make sure that we're as effective as possible going forward with the, the types of challenges that Australia is facing. Senator, we have reflected, um, and we have reflected with the Queensland Government as well on this on this issue. Um, uh, Mr Richardson can provide a bit more information about some of those conversations. I mean, we do take these seriously, um, and we don't want to see something like this happen again. So. so how does that fit with the evidence that we heard earlier this evening, that we've currently got 176 species in ecological communities where there's been a decision made that a recovery plan's needed? And there's not yet one in place. How is that learning the lessons from um, the Senator, extinction of I the think Bramble Cay? What I also reiterated this evening is that 99.8 per cent of the threatened species that are listed in the ecological communities that are listed uh, do have a conservation advice and or a recovery plan in place. 
and those, those documents do provide important information about what we can do to ensure that um, we're doing every, you know, what we can do to, um, to improve or, you know, do some work on, on the plight of those species in ecological communities. Um, as, as Mr Knudsen has also pointed out, um, over the last uh, few years we have significantly reformed um, with a major spending program for action on ground in relation to uh, natural resource management um, so that and, and focused the majority of our spending, all, all of the environment spending, uh, to matters of national environmental significance and the majority of that goes towards threatened species and ecological communities. And any spending that we um, approve under our programs um, the actions that um, will be undertaken must be consistent with those conservation advices and with those and with the recovery plans. So um, we do uh, work to connect the science that we have with the regulatory approaches and with the program spending to ensure that um, we can get the best outcomes for our species and our ecological communities. But we do reflect as well, as I mentioned earlier, um, and we had conversations with the Queensland Government about what could have been done, and one of the reflections was that you know, it, it was too late and the, that you know, we, we could have perhaps engaged uh, sooner in terms of the Bramble Caves Melanus with the Queensland Government or vice versa. Um, and, and that's a very sad reflection for us. I think one of the benefits of the common assessment methodology approach and the streamlining of the Commonwealth and the state regulatory arrangements um, will be that we will be in much more active dialogue with the states and territories because we'll have common listings um, and, and consistent listings with our species and our, and our threatened ecological communities. Um, and, and I hope that that will also enable us to work collaboratively with our colleagues um, to ensure that we can, we can take action as we, see, as we see things happening. Have you formally documented those reflections? No, Senator, we haven't. Um, I might add that the Bramble K. Melamy um, was a species that did have a recovery plan that identified the threats to that species. Yes, so, so this wasn't be, one that didn't have a recovery plan. There should be some learnings from that too as to why recovery plans did not, you know, from 2008, I, recovery plan, and think, yet it still went extinct. Yeah. I think we're in agreement there, Senator. Mm. Um, one of the other things, Senator, and I may ask uh, the Threatened Species Commissioner to come to the table if that would be helpful. I don't want to belabor the point, but one of the things that we're uh, trying to focus on with the 70 priority species is also trying to look at the effectiveness of our, of our interventions and how that's influencing the trajectory of species. I think if we get our heads around that in a much more significant way, it'll help us be more effective going forward, figuring out what intervention for what species gonna, is going to have the greatest positive impact. I, I just wanted to flag that because I think that's a real Senator, under the threat point species that we have to strategy, focus on. Um, we uh, have highlighted um, or one of the one of the priority actions there is the opportunity for emergency of interventions um, and I think the threatened species commissioner can talk about look um, I, I've got limited time I'm sorry so yeah. in in fact we, I, and I know yes you've got 70 species we have got 477 species on our threatened species list we know that even those 70 that are on the priority list that the recommendations on their recovery plans aren't being implemented I've already heard ample evidence of that in our um, faunal extinction inquiry. So look, I, I do want to move on because I haven't, I've got very limited time. The other um, species I was just interested to know what, what actually happened was about the Tama 